Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. Today is Friday, December 6, 2024. I figured I'd provide a quick update to a recent video that I released on the NASDAQ. I swung a position targeting 520, which is right here on the NASDAQ on Tuesday. The video in which I did was this one right here on the technical analysis plus GEX to swing trade NASDAQ options on the QQQ and the NQ futures. This was the broken wing butterfly. I'm still currently in that broken wing butterfly, but I'm about to close it out. So I just wanted to update you guys and just showcase to you guys with a live PL, with a live risk profile, what this type of spread looks like when it's close to expiration. The spread expires later today and it's currently 10 18 Eastern time here. So it expires in a little under six hours. This is the current chart of the QQQ on a 15 minute time frame. Again, the position was opened here. We had a nice swing with the gap up to 520, which was the targets. But then I continued to hold the NASDAQ position as I didn't have to worry about theta. And I was giving the NASDAQ the opportunity to pull back to this range here. If we ended up in this range on Friday, it would have been a home run trade. I would definitely say overall for this position, it's been a great trade. But as you guys can see why I like these broke wing butterflies is because it means even though the market has gone past, which was my target of 21,400, there is no risk to the upside. So it doesn't matter how much higher the market goes. The gains are capped at $565, as we can see right here if the market was to go up one percent today if it was to go up two percent if it was to go up uh three percent four percent it doesn't matter even if it went all the way over here this is the gains to the upside it is capped and if the market was to pull back about one percent right now it puts it in the territory of that massive lotto home run trade but it doesn't look like we're going to get that right now tos is saying that the standard deviation is about this range here so the best we can say i would expect would be for the nasdaq to pull back and that would put this trade depending on when it pulled back up around fourteen hundred dollars or so this is the same spread here on option strat if you're not familiar with the think or swim risk profile this is how much the debit is or how much i pay to open the position so about a 50 percent return on this trade it was open on a tuesday and today is a friday so not bad for a painless trade in which i never really had to manage these types of positions aren't trades in which you really manage you just take a stop loss if you're wrong in other words as i had addressed in the previous video let's just say the nasdaq had broken down below 514 i would have stopped out of the trade i essentially opened it around here and i would have closed it if we went down here so i was essentially risking a little over a dollar and a half or so almost two dollars on the queues something i want to point out because i get this question all the time can you trade the nasdaq or can you trade nasdaq futures using the qqq and the answer is yes i stick to the qqq and i stick to the spy they've been around for ages and they will continue to be around the etfs are my preferred tools of analysis if you can read the queues and you can read the spy it means you can trade the spx you can trade the xsp it means you can trade the es the mes you can trade all derivatives of the S&P 500 and the same applies for the Nasdaq if you can analyze and interpret the data the gamma exposure the candlestick charts on the QQQ it means you can trade the Nasdaq it means you can trade the M and Q it means you can trade any derivative of the Nasdaq all I did was click right here and then drag up to 520 and then I'm letting this tool that you guys can see right here that I think a swim is populating do the math for me and it's telling me around here was about a 0.75% increase. So that 0.75 increase, all I had to do is head over to the NQ and then at that point in time, which is right around here, click this and just see where is about a 0.75 increase. And that's where I ended up with this number as I addressed in the previous video. So these numbers don't really mean that much to me. The same thing if you were to use the NDX, which is the index, these numbers are going to be different all over the place. I just try to keep it on a percentual basis. In other words, if I was taking a trade on the NDX and I was analyzing the cues, I would do the same thing. I would just click this right here. I would drag up to be about 0.75 and it's looking like 0.75 on this would have been about 21,000 360 but instead of confusing myself by looking at all these different symbols and tickers i just stick to the qqq as it is the most liquid instruments of the bunch it has the most amount of data the options chain is the most liquid the numbers are also easier to articulate 520 is much easier than 21,400 in my opinion 
if I were to say 21,400 to someone for the NASDAQ, they might be confused. Am I talking about the futures or am I talking about the cash settled index like the NDX? As you guys see, the NDX was 21,360 or so. That's a 40 point difference. All of that to me leaves room for chaos and confusion. 520. QQQ, I think a trader of any level of their career can understand that. Now, I think the odds of the NASDAQ closing down at 520 are pretty low today because as we can see, we've just breached the Quant Trading app intraday zone here. VWAP is pretty elevated. So we have this as a line of support if the NASDAQ was to retrace. We have VWAP as a line of support if the market was to retrace. We have yesterday's high, which is 524 if the NASDAQ was to retrace. We have the two day anchored VWAP, which is likely to come up if the NASDAQ was, was to retrace. We have the opening prints, which is likely to act as support. We have yesterday's low, which is also likely to act as support. That is one, two, three, four, five, six potential supports before we get down to 520. That's a lot of support for the NASDAQ to break down below without any major catalyst. I believe the last major catalyst for the day was 25 minutes ago as it's now 1025 Eastern time, but anything can happen. So that is one of the reasons I am considering to let this position play itself out because at this point, I'm only risking about $100 because at this point, I'm only risking about $100 or $200 if the market was to go any higher. And I only ended up realizing about $565 versus if they pulled back. So I'm just weighing the risk to reward. If I'm risking about a hundred more dollars, if the NASDAQ was to stay here or go higher versus making potentially another thousand, even $1,500, if it was was to pull back 1%, that seems to be a good risk to reward ratio. And that's one of the reasons I would consider or a trader would consider continuing to hold a broken wing butterfly like this until the last few minutes of the day. Another view of the cues right now is the three minute chart. We can also see this is a strong, healthy trend right here. This is our nine EMA and this is the three minute time frame. We see that we've had the EMA VWAP crossover. So this is likely to hold as some support also. If the nine EMA was to break back down below VWAP, then I would consider that to be a, a significant sign of a potential reversal, reversal or intraday trend change, but I'm not holding my breath for that. And lastly, I figured it'd be neat to just wrap up on the gamma exposure profile. So this is the most recent print here at 10.15. As you guys can see, it's just about 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. So in a couple of minutes, we'll see an updated feed of this. I could get this information in real time, but again, I like to just base things off of these snapshots as it makes it easier, in my opinion, instead of looking for every single nuanced piece of information. We can see that 525 is, is a significant strike for the day, but it seems to be as if the queues can drift up to 527. I would not expect it to close below 523 today. However, if we broke down below 523, then I think I have a really strong shot at 520 as this is the highest negative gamma strike for now. But based on my experience, I would expect the cues to kind of land around here for the majority of today. Looking ahead is something I'll also like to do. This is for next week. So just before the market opens, this is a cache of next week's gamma exposure profile. We can see that before the market opened, 525 on the NASDAQ was a key strike for next week. However, it looks like things as of now don't seem that prominent past 530. There is a lot of absolute gamma to the left side, which is the downside on the charts, which is interesting. So we have 510, we have 520, and then we have this 522 area here. So this area is definitely of significance for the NASDAQ for next week from an absolute gamma perspective, which means if we did retrace, this area is likely to act as some support which makes sense. There's also a gap right below here. This was the start of the gap. There was a consolidation here before we had a push to the new all time high. So if we come back down to this level, one can expect there to be some sort of support or consolidation. There is an edge here. I might decide to run an out the money really cheap put butterfly for next week to see if there's any type of retracement or maybe for a couple weeks out since we didn't fully get it this week here and never quite came back down to 520. Guys, let me know if you like this video in the comments down below. Like it, share it if you've learned something. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't before. Let me know if you're interested in seeing these quick follow-up videos to specific positions in which I might have shared on the YouTube channel. I'm considering doing one on an update for the calendar spread that I addressed in this video as that trade is also doing pretty well for this week. I appreciate the feedback and I'll catch you guys in the next one.